But what if there was something out there right in front of us that we actually could take that actually cures depression? Especially because recent clinical trials have been consistently showing that one or two doses of psilocybin quickly relieve depressive symptoms and the effects lasted anywhere from four weeks to a year. Richard was my 57-year-old patient in the ICU. He was on a ventilator, unable to breathe on his own. I knew he was in a deep coma, but at the moment, I wasn't sure if he was brain dead that would require some more testing. All of this was a result of intentionally overdosing on insulin to the point of causing his blood sugar level to drop to single digits. In other words, extremely dangerous hypoglycemia. But why did he do it? He left a note on the dresser next to his bed, which in essence said he had given up. Unfortunately, the extreme hypoglycemia destroyed his neurons and we officially declared him brain dead and brain death equals death. When his wife was at the bedside, she tells me that he stopped going to therapy and stopped taking his antidepressant medications because they didn't help him. And he was tired of the side effects making him feel like crap. As she was bawling, she asked, is there anything else I could have done differently to prevent this? Of course, that was extremely difficult to answer. But it makes me wonder, could he have tried something else that might have paved the way to overcome his depression? And one of the biggest questions with depression right now in 2023 is the use of magic mushrooms, specifically psilocybin. Does it cure depression? Obviously, a difficult question to answer. Depression is the most common psychiatric disorder in the world. There's been over 30 drugs approved by the FDA to treat adults with major depressive disorder. Generally speaking, these drugs work only slightly better when compared to placebo. Of the 9 million people in the United States taking medication to treat depression, a 2021 study estimated that just under a third of them aren't helped by the drugs, what is known as treatment-resistant depression. And to make matters worse, every one of them come with a number of side effects, typically things like nausea, diarrhea, dizziness, trouble sleeping, restlessness, upset stomach, weight gain, dry mouth, decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, just to name a few. So yeah, it's fair to ask, is it even worth taking them? But what if there was something out there right in front of us that we actually could take that actually cures depression? Especially because recent clinical trials have been consistently showing that one or two doses of psilocybin quickly relieve depressive symptoms and the effects lasted anywhere from four weeks to a year. Now, in a study done at Johns Hopkins in 2020, researchers showed that when psilocybin was combined with supportive psychotherapy, it relieved major depressive disorder symptoms for up to a month. In a follow-up study of those participants, they learned that those effects can last up to a year. So what's the downside? Now, when ingesting psilocybin, it can cause nausea, headache, dizziness, fatigue, and there's a decent chance of experiencing some magical hallucinations for several hours. To be more specific, psilocybin can produce perceptual changes, altering a person's awareness of their surroundings and of their thoughts and feelings. But how this molecule actually interacts with neurons in the brain has been a mystery. But we've learned a lot more recently. When psilocybin is ingested, it's quickly broken down into psilocin, which binds to and activates a small group of neuronal receptors in the serotonin family, those 5-HT family of receptors, most notably the 5-HT2A receptor. So the neurotransmitter serotonin, which affects mood and emotions, normally turns on these receptors. And the main goal of selective serotonin receptor inhibitors, SSRIs, is to change the activity of serotonin. Depressed patients focus more on negative emotions and thoughts, but psilocybin quickly reduces that negative emotional bias as it has parallel effects on cognitive processing in the cortex and the emotional processing part of the brain, the amygdala. So basically, psilocybin facilitates cognitive control over emotions. It also affects the way the brain's functional networks work. One of these is called the default mode network, which is a group of nodes in the cerebral cortex that work together to help us see and understand ourselves. People with depression tend to get stuck in a cycle of being too self-conscious, but brain imaging data suggests that psilocybin could break these cycles by making the default mode network less connected. In a 2021 study, researchers used a specially made microscope to look at the brains of living mice that had been given psilocybin. After just one dose, the researchers saw a strong and lasting increase in the number and the size of dendritic spines in the cerebral cortex. Dendritic spines are the neuronal projections that connect to other neurons. 
they could still see the increase in number of neuronal connections up to a month after that single dose. Now, in this study, scientists analyzed functional MRI scans from almost 60 people who had participated in two psilocybin trials. In the first one, all the participants had treatment-resistant depression and knew that they would be given psilocybin. Now, in the second one, the participants were depressed, but not as severely depressed, and they were not told whether they had been given either psilocybin or escitalopram, also known as Lexapro, which is a type of SSRI antidepressant. All the participants also received the same type of psychotherapy. The functional MRI brain scans, which were done before and after treatment, showed that the psilocybin treatment decreased connections between brain areas that are tightly connected in depression, such as the default mode network and the executive network, and it increased connections to other parts of the brain that were not well connected before. People who took part in the trial were also less afraid of their feelings and their mental abilities improved. Changes in their brains were linked to the fact that their depressive symptoms got better and these changes lasted for up to three weeks after they received the second dose of psilocybin. People who took escitalopram didn't have these kinds of changes in their brains. So this suggests that the psilocybin and the SSRIs work on the brain in different ways. Psilocybin and other serotonergic psychedelics affect the 5H2TA receptors, which are found in large numbers in brain networks that are overactive in those with depression. One theory is that these drugs temporarily snap these links, which gives them a chance to reconnect in new ways in the following days and weeks. Another way of thinking about the depressed brain is that there's these rigid thought patterns that impact well-being, and some scientists call this the depressed landscape with deep wells that make it difficult for patients to move in between these different thoughts and perspectives. Psilocybin therapy is thought to flatten the brain's landscape and open up this rigidity of the depressed brain to allow new thoughts, insights, and perspectives to emerge. Post-treatment, a flatter landscape makes it easier for patients to experience healthier flexibility and diversity in their thought patterns. So there's the background and the context for psilocybin. And then in 2022 came the study in the New England Journal of Medicine, which looked at the single-dose psilocybin therapy that was given along with psychotherapy for the treatment of resistant depression. This was the most rigorous and well-powered phase two clinical trial among these studies. Those with treatment-resistant major depressive episodes, they were randomly assigned to receive one of three psilocybin doses. One was the biggest dose of 25 milligrams, then there was the middle dose of 10 milligrams, and finally the control group, which was just one milligram of psilocybin. The level of depression severity for each participant was assessed the day before treatment using a psychological scale that's widely used by clinicians. Counselors who were trained to offer psychological support were present during the psychedelic trips, which lasted around six to eight hours. Participants had two psychotherapy sessions in the first week of taking that psilocybin. So the highest dose of 25 milligrams, but not the intermediate dose of 10 milligrams, led to significantly lower levels of depressive symptoms after three weeks compared to the lowest dose of that one milligram control. Essentially, if you were in that 25 milligram group, you were three times more likely to respond compared to the control group, and it was a fast response. The maximum effect was seen the day after receiving it, which contrasts with standard antidepressants, which usually takes several weeks to achieve that maximum effect. The effects did start to wear off by three months though, so does that mean that you have to take psilocybin once every three months for treatment-resistant depression? That's too soon to know right now. Another important point is that when people have treatment-resistant depression, they're at high risk of physical illness, disability, hospitalization, and potential for suicide. So when you wean them off their antidepressant medications, which was necessary to do for the purposes of this study, the risk of suicide does go up. For the specifics of this study, participants had to be off their antidepressant treatment during the first three weeks after taking the psilocybin, although these medications could be restarted at any time during the trial if it was deemed clinically necessary by a doctor. There was also a significant problem with the study that should not be overlooked and that there were uneven number of severely depressed patients in each group with significantly fewer severely depressed people in the 25 milligram dose group. Headache, nausea, fatigue, dizziness occurred in almost 80% of the patients in this study, which occurred at all three dosage levels, which wasn't all that surprising because that's what magic mushrooms are known to do. There were a few people in all groups who experienced suicidal thoughts or injured themselves over the three month follow-up period. And it's hard to draw any conclusions on this because for one, the numbers were so small, but also because the participants stopped taking their antidepressant medication. So while this study's results were promising, it by itself wasn't enough to definitively tell us how effective this treatment is, 
we need more studies to sort that out. So how often does taking mushrooms lead to someone having a bad trip? In an online survey of psilocybin mushroom users, four out of 10 people rated it as among the most challenging experiences of their lifetimes, putting themselves or others at risk of physical harm or manifesting physically aggressive or violent behavior, receiving medical help, and seeking treatment for psychological symptoms. But with that said, most actually endorse the experience. So fast forward to 2023, and based on this new double-blind randomized controlled trial of 52 people, the study suggests that a single moderate dose of psilocybin significantly reduced depressive symptoms compared to placebo for at least two weeks. Also, there is no serious adverse events reported. It's the first time that a clinical trial of a hallucinogen has reached phase three, which is one of the last steps needed before an experimental drug can be sent to the FDA for approval. The study is being done by the Compass Pathways, a pharmaceutical company in the UK that studies psilocybin, and it should be done by the middle of 2025. In the upcoming phase three trial, all the bad things that happen will be looked at very closely. There's gonna be three parts to the project. One, we'll compare the 25 milligram dose directly to a sugar pill, something like niacin. Another study will be just like phase two, comparing doses of one, 10, and 25 milligrams, but the second dose will be given three weeks later. Psilocybin is also being studied for other difficult to treat mental health conditions, things like PTSD, OCD, anorexia nervosa, as well as alcoholism. Thanks for watching this video. If you learned something in this video, you might wanna check out this video right here. It's about how my patient fixed her depression.